Okay. Yeah. I, something is going wrong. It's been board all week docs. with more docs. It's not working. Yeah. All right, 6 p.m. We'll call the regular village board meeting to order. If you'd all join me in a moment of silence. <clears throat> We have a, a scout with us tonight. Sir, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, do you have the roll? Trustee Mann. Here. Trustee Gerger. Present. Trustee Fountain. Here. Trustee Detmers. Here. Trustee Mao. Here. Trustee Scherschel. Present. Village President Kimsey. Present. Public announcements this evening. At these mics, huh? I didn't hear You're myself. I didn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Janet Behrens. <laughs> Yes. I'm 68 years old. I have lived at 216 Eagle Ridge Drive for over 20 years. I love it there. However, my mother fell a couple of years ago, and I had to quit work to take care of her. Okay. So you could basically say, I'm broke, and I don't want to leave Chatham. I love it here. However, when you get old, life happens and there's, you know, you can't stop it. The elderly people of Chatham need help with lawn mowing, with shoveling, with reaching things, with lifting heavy things. And so I was wondering if perhaps you could get together with the schools or the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or the library or the Goodwill. Certainly there has to be, have to be some good Samaritans in this town to help the elderly. Because one of these days, you're going to be in my position. Just saying. Thank you, Ms. Barron. We'll reach out. We're, a lot of us are tied to some of those groups, so we have your name and address, so we'll see if we can find any. All right. Thank you. Any other public announcements? Pat, those are awfully hot. <laughs> Screaming, everybody. <laughs> I'd just like to thank the trustees and the village board for the support of our veterans in our community. I'm Les Morgan. Um, been a member of the Legion for 29 years now, and um, the village has been very supportive of us, and we appreciate that. And I appreciate Trustee Fountain, Detmers, and Mal for helping out at the fish fry for the last couple of weeks. We've got two more to go, so I'll come out on Friday from 5 to 7.30 for all you can eat fish fry. Thank you, Les. Any other announcements this evening? Public comments? So also, Pat McCarthy, thank him. <laughs> public, public comments with regard to agenda topics. Uh, Ms. Cherry had signed up. Is this two something on the agenda or just a general comment? Okay, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do some business, then we'll get right back to you, okay? A motion to put the consent agenda on the table. Make that motion. I'll second. Second. Ooh. Trustee Mao, second by Trustee Mann. Discussion or questions regarding the minutes or the warrants? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Fountain. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. Trustee Scherschel. Yes. Item one under old business is the ordinance approving water main easement with the Hindu Temple, Greater Springfield. We have a motion to bring this to the table. Make that motion. Trustee Mao has made a motion. I'll second. Second by Trustee Fountain. Uh, been around for a while. They're ready now, Pat. It is ready. We've had the wording redone so that uh, 
if we hit any utilities while we're digging, we're responsible for them, which we would be anyway, but we're not responsible for replacing sidewalk or pavement or anything like that on that area. So that's fair agreement. So, Madam Clerk. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Fountain. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. Trustee Churchill. Yes. Uh, item one under new business is a resolution authorizing the Chatham JCs to use park property for bingo at the 2019 Sweet Corn Festival. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Trustee Scherzel has made a motion second by Trustee Detmers. The JCs approach, they want they have bingo licenses and the ability to do this through the state. The state needs a letter from the village to authorize it. So Jeff made sure there's nothing in our ordinance that prevents or promotes doing this. Um, it takes a letter that says we're allowing them to use the land. They've got the land for the Sweet Corn Festival that weekend anyway, so didn't want to sign it without you guys knowing what was going on. So here's your chance. Thanks for your help, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Clerk. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Fountain. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. Trustee Churchill. Yes. Item two is a resolution appointing Andrew Demers to the Public Properties and Recreation Committee. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Trustee I'll second. Mao, second by Trustee Fountain. This is a motion we discussed two meetings ago, I think, to add a trustee onto the Parks Committee. Uh, we had one person step down, so Dewey would fill the balance of his term through 2021. Hearing no discussion, Madam Clerk. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Fountain. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Present. Trustee Mao. Yes. Trustee Churchill. Yes. All right. Now, Ms. Cherry, public comments on Village of Business. If you'd like to step forward, please. I just wanted to say thank you guys for listening to me last month and getting the work done in the neighborhood and helping with the water problem. But I also need to know, are you going to plant any grass there since you've done the work? Yeah, Pat, you said once once they can get back there and grade after that, it's got to dry back up. <laughs> yeah, we've had all this rain. That's a, that's a muddy mess right there right now. So when it dries out and we can get in there and disc it up, we'll put some seed in there and we'll, right. we'll get grass to grow. Okay. And I thank you all for listening, you know, and helping out. Thank, thank you. you. And may I ask you a question? I know you and... The one gentleman back there had brought uh, also forward the size of the print on the agenda. Does the current size print that we have gone to, does that assist? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. For pointing that out. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Hearing none, schedule the meetings, the ADA Transition Planning Committee, 6 p.m. April 16th, Planning Commission, 6 p.m. April 18th, Village Board, 6 p.m. April 23rd, Public Properties and Recreation, May 13th, 6 p.m., Village Board, 6 p.m. May 14th, followed by the Committee of the Whole, and the Tilly Oversight Subcommittee scheduled 6 p.m. June 10th. Uh, no closed session during the board. No will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Trustee Second. Fountain, second by Trustee Mao. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting stands adjourned. We'll wait for six minutes because we can't start the next meeting until 6.15 per our agenda. So. You might have a good joke, a clean joke because the cameras are still on. <laughs> yeah. mm. This ordinance, Board Docs isn't working right now. I don't know if it's on Kevin or do you. I'm going to email Jill tomorrow the number. But just do we? But I'll add it tomorrow when Board Docs works. So do you know the ordinance? The last ordinance that was passed. All right, how are you? Ready? You ready? It's not on my on the one I have. Yeah, I've been looking, trying to look up the last two days. Board Docs are too early. Um, but I'll put a volume while John has teller. By yourself? Yeah.
he a real big guy? Okay. I know who he is. Really? Big Dan. Pat yeah. exaggerated, though. He said really big. Cool. Yeah. He is to me. Maybe. 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 Community service. You look lesser stature. Yeah, they do. Right. He's like you. He's like here. He's like two girders. He's <laughs> 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 an ordinance number. Is he cater for the school? He's probably maybe. Yes. He's seven. No. Every day. Anyway, I'm not used to the like guy. And it's not just that for some reason the guys that we have. You're the shortest guy? I'm pretty close. Occasionally there'll be a little ring. No, I, I would agree. All of those, all of those, six feet, every one. Yeah, it's crazy. What do you say? I'm glad you I asked him about it. I go to my work dinner. I'm like. This is just so much fun. It's just weird because I'm not sure he's not so good. Yes, he is. Maybe he's going to afford to play. I don't know where he's going. I'm just going to look at this. I'm going to put that on. I'm going to put that on. We usually have it in pants or whatever. I think they, the past two, well, I don't know how many times I've played it, but usually I've played it as Panther. It's a Panther. Do you know do you know Todd Cabot on So they have a they have a dinner one of the organizations has a dinner every year and he doesn't have the one year he got a drink and it's a little umbrella and gave him so much and gave him so much crap about it. It was hilarious. <laughs> And they and they specifically by law can create programs so programs for the well, I was, it's by statute. But I was looking through here which one there is winners. winners. Win. Like, say, for instance, this one here, okay? Yeah. This is the change. So, if you look, this one, we're taking 8,700 out of this line, Can you go and we're making it up out of all of those three. So, they always group together. This one replaces this one. It was $1,000 different. This one, 8000 and we took it out I just had to change it from two dollars, two fifty to two dollars for the so green. So everything okay. between the grays. Yep. Is Here it is. So you can see that those add. So you get one negative, and then all the rest. Well, Dewey caught it. He catches, oh, okay. he catches all of them. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. I was just because I was just curious, but then I looked. Okay, Dewey. It's I read some of them, and they kind of pretty much answered what I was. You tried to. I mean, you got limited space to be able. She's to one and done. Yeah. And shows up to the double header and only plays one game. <laughs> starting, starting pitcher. Starting pitcher. They're on the bus already. And it's like a two inning affair. Aren't they supposed oh, to stay yeah. in the dugout though? I mean, you can just leave. The showers. No, you never yeah. see them again. Yeah. Get out of there easy. <laughs> I'm just going to nap until 7.15. Were there many people here last night? How long did it last last night? 30. Did you mean 6.15 or are you going all out for 7.15? I'm going to another two. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure if we need to wait. Hopefully it's done by use the word soon again. I'm going to scream. If they what? If they use the word soon again? Really soon? It doesn't mean anything. No, it's, 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 it's like, you know. Eight months ago, so. <laughs> it's 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 slide, slide that's when we get that. That's pretty awesome. Now that's six. Oh, yeah, I think it's 45 or 46. You know. The water bonds, 45 or 46. You don't have that, like, just on the ready. That should be top radar. Yeah. I keep telling Pat what he did. Change that. The man? It wouldn't be that expensive to... No, no, he said we could... Pretty easy. Welcome to Jim. What are you going to do? Update one? Huh? 
Updated. Updated. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> last year. Thank you. I've been debating on whether to relax. Get some 15 seconds. Well, make us just put a giant picture of that mouth by here. We'd never have mice in here. Ever. No, we would not. <laughs> Better than cats, I tell you. You're on. Yep. Call to order. <laughs> Liven the place up a little bit. Roll, roll call. Okay. Trustee Mann. We're going to call the meeting to order. Here. Trustee Gerker. Present. Trustee Fountain. Here. Trustee Detmers. Here. Trustee Mao. Here. Trustee Scherschel. Present. And Mayor Kimsey. Present. Any uh, public comments on agenda topics? Nothing up here. Okay. Nothing. Um, can I have a motion to bring the consent agenda forward? So moved. I'll second that. Trustee Scherschel, second by Trustee Mao. Discussion? Minor edit on the minutes, uh, just with respect to the cost of the green program. Recorded as two point five dollars. It's too too flat. That edit's been made. Okay. It's been changed. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. Old business none. New business. An ordinance prohibiting the use of groundwater as a potable water supply by the installation or use of potable water supply wells or by any other method. Discussion? We're still working on this. We'll have, we should have an update hopefully by the next meeting or thereafter. Okay. So we don't have, have it ready for presentation at this time yet. Yeah. Which version are we looking? Are we looking to get a map of what's going to be affected? Are we still... Yeah, we're trying to answer uh, the the various questions that were raised the first time this was presented going to be working with the engineers and the uh, EPA and all that so okay and so and I know I asked the last time the if if by chance if someone in wanted to dig a well it's not the EPA that regulates that it's public health I believe okay so I'm just kind of curious on the liability issues and in that aspect too okay. any other further discussion we don't need a motion to table this. They can just go to old business next time. That's right. Mm -hmm. You want it moved to old business? Yeah, if we could. Uh, CMT engineering updates. Good evening. Uh, fairly light agenda here in terms of uh, engineering. Uh, working on uh, last year's MFT closeout, received the information uh, from village staff on that, and uh, once April comes to a close, we'll final out that. In the process of developing uh, next year's or uh, next year's fiscal year MFT program, it'll consist of uh, mostly maintenance type items, um, oil and ship patching, uh, so forth, um, uh, some slurry seal, but uh, no grand scale projects as we're finishing off uh, North Park. So North Park look like uh, starting here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, should see a lot of activity here at the end of April and early May, with uh, early May being the completion date for that project, fully paved out and done. Uh, traffic control will probably be a little bit busy, um, but uh, we are on first uh, on Friesen's list in terms of uh, getting that all down and uh, out of the chute here in terms of getting that project completed. Uh, working on a couple of other miscellaneous projects around town, more maintenance type items as requested um, and needed. And then um, one thing that we will start up on here after the fiscal year kicks off is the phase one report uh, for Walnut Street uh, that, was, that received uh, STU funding uh, through SATS last year. So that begins um, at the fiscal year and those funds become available. So. Jim, on uh, the Park Street project, is there any chance before, if they go out there and start doing their grinding and mobilizing, maybe they could get somebody out there next week to go along and do some of the finished work on the, the dirt around the uh, exit ramps and pick up all the loose, broken concrete and stuff that they still have out there? I can request that. I'm guessing they're going to want to do that after the asphalt work because I'm guessing with the amount of truck traffic and staging and vehicular traffic, um, 
you may have an errant vehicle parking on a parkway or something like that. But you will have. You'll go through and make sure the punch list that everything is cleaned up and finalized. Restored, seeded, uh, mulched, and uh, brought back to final grade. Um, basically, they left that to weather out over the winter, settle back in for areas that they uh, excavated out. But, uh, everything will be cleaned out, all the gutters cleaned out, all the grade uh, dirt, you know, finished grade and seeded mulched. We have got compliments on how smooth that is and be able to even ride your bicycle along that way with just in transition all the way across to everything. But there were complaints that they went and left it in a, in a, in a messy way. So. Yes, I mean, with the extra dirt and everything there, from <clears throat> digging out the sidewalks and, uh, you know, with everything frozen at the end of the year when we left it, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot you could do with it. But, uh, yeah, I think in particular it was the concrete. You know, sometimes you have that extra bit that is coming down the chute, but you've uh, not needed for your project or the sidewalk that in many places they just dumped it in the yard. And, and there were folks that were asking me, like, hey, I want to make my yard look good. I want to get out there and work, but I've got this big mess in my yard. And uh, so I did ask that we talk, we talk to the contractor about that. Okay, I will give them a call tomorrow. Thank you. Do we know, is there, uh, this, is, this is a water question, uh, do we know as far as the chloramines, if anything has changed on it or we're still hoping for soon uh, on those? That I don't know. I'd need to touch base with Bill on that. Okay. Uh, I can touch base with you tomorrow and follow up. Last time I talked to him, they didn't have a solid date on when they were going to switch. And then um, while we've got Jim up here, uh, just want to kind of get the general feel. Uh, there's two potential funding opportunities. Uh, the first one, which has been announced, uh, is the Illinois Tran Enhancement or Transportation Enhancement Program, uh, which we did apply two years ago. Uh, we're not successful. Uh, it is a very popular um, program. However, the have made the announcement early because one of the requirements that they are going to require that applicants submit is a project development report. Uh, and I guess the question is, you know, do we want to look at possibly having CMT do that work? Uh, and I know Jim's going to take a look, come up with, you know, a general dollar cost. Uh, for both the project development report and also doing the application uh, to kind of complete what was somewhat started on Park Street along with a few other places to make these connections. Uh, so I guess I'm just wondering if there's a general consensus if we want Jim to come up with those numbers or if there's no desire to do it. Uh, you know, these funds... This would basically be for the sidewalks, ramps. Um, basically, it actually opens up October 2nd. Close date is December 6th, which um, basically is going to give you six months uh, to complete the project de development report. Uh, however, uh, the funds do not need to be authorized you know, as far as the construction until September 30th, 2023. So there's still plenty of time in there to build up any match to that. And MFT funds would be eligible. Uh, so just wondering what the general consensus is. I agree. I think we talked about this a little bit, but are we would we focus in the Walnut area, like between Park and Gordon? I know the sidewalk area there has always been a struggle where the south side of the road. Uh, there is a map oh. um, that Pat printed out, which was from la the last uh, cycle of ITEP funds. Uh, that kind of showed some things. Unfortunately, the legend may be a little bit harder to look at, but basically it was trying to finish up Park Street to get you down to the park, uh, to the south. It was looking at some improvements along Gordon, or I'm, yeah, along Plummer, uh, and then also uh, some additional uh, work along Walnut Street uh, to try and make some connections uh, that just aren't out there right now. Those are ramp updates and ramp updates and yes, and taking those three foot sidewalks and making them four foot 
Uh, and there's a few places with potentially new sidewalks. So I guess I'm just wondering what the general thought is as far as the board. You know, before we have Jim spend you know, a few hours uh, calculating what that cost is going to be to uh, do both the project development report and application. I personally would have no issue with, with them doing that. You can get us an estimate, work yeah. estimate. Yeah. 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 Depends on the price. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other uh, opportunity for funding, which has not been released yet, but inside sources, uh, is the HSIP program, the Highway Safety Improvement Program. Uh, once again, this just requires an application. There is no uh, true engineering as far as a project development report that's required, uh, or at least none that I've heard of. Uh, this should probably be announced within the next week or two. Uh, and my thought is with Walnut Street, uh, probably first take a look at any crashes along that two-lane section that we've got funding for as far as STU for just engineering and see if it makes sense to put together an application uh, after being able to review the accident or crashes along that stretch. And this would be a 90-10 uh, funding. Uh, and to me, if all of a sudden we get, let's say, a half a million dollars uh, from it, uh, and I do know that with local agencies, there's been money left there where there has not been sufficient applications being submitted. Uh, so hopefully the chances would be good as long as it meets the requirements. But let's say it's a half a million dollar out of the 1.5 or 2 million of whatever the overall project is. To me, that's something where you can go back to SAS, the Springfield Area Transportation Study Group. And when it comes time for construction, say, you know what? We now have a half a million dollars more that we are going to apply towards this, which makes the project a little bit more attractive. So I guess the question is, do we want Jim to take the time to come up with an estimate for doing an application what, for that? What's, because it's a safety enhancement program, what's, what's the crash data that it takes to become eligible? Yeah. You know, <coughs> you got fatalities, that definitely helps, but you don't want the fatalities. <laughs> yeah, you know, odd, yeah, that's I an know. odd sentence to say, but you know, volunteer. <laughs> uh, but no, basically, if you can show that there is an improvement that can be done uh, to help reduce the crashes, and you have what's known as a benefit cost ratio of greater than one, then it qualifies. Uh, doesn't mean it'll be selected, but at least it would qualify. And, you know, if all of a sudden when Jim talks to the Bureau of Safety Program Engineering that you can get all the accidents along with whatever uh, our department has, uh, you know, he may take a look and say, oh, no, there was two property damages and that was it, then it may not uh, it's, it's, be reasonable to pursue it any further. That's the question, which I think we've got that. Do we have we've got that data. That and and the other part is... Streetwise, does it have to be Walnut, where you got a county highway or a major highway, or is it any local road? It could be any. Any local road. Okay. But I'm just thinking with that stretch. Yeah, of Walnut, I, I know what you're thinking. I'm just trying to frame what the program is. And with related to Walnut, I mean, we're doing that work anyhow as part of the Walnut work, so it'd just be a reprioritization in terms of looking at the safety and crash data, kind of at the beginning of the project. So to fill out the application is nothing. So I mean, we can just take care of that that's not you know if that's something that you guys want to pursue we'll just fill out the application as part of that and if we were if we were going to pick a second spot i would say we should pick plumber boulevard from uh, essentially uh, park street uh, east oh, to uh, gordon drive no the other direction oh, to west. the part that's the part that runs in front of the high school and the middle school mm -hmm. It's a two-lane road. You got buses turning in and out of there all the time. You have a lot of traffic from the high school age kids, and then a lot of traffic from the teachers and the people picking up their kids at the elementary school there. So, with that only being really two lanes through there, it would be nice to be able to have an enhancement on that. Yeah. Um, no, I would agree. But I think <clears throat> when you do submit, you're right. Want to pick the better of the two? Most likely, they're not going to fund both. Uh, and it's going to be driven by the crashes. 
Uh, so, you know, maybe that's where. But if we have more, if, if you're giving if us more crashes on Plumber, even though we would like the money to go towards uh, uh, yeah, Walnut Street. I can't switch them. Or bait and switch there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jerry. All right. Delvaro, Pat's car, and add to the statistics. Right? <laughs> we'll, we'll take both of the Camaros out there and see. Yeah. Which road are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Sounds good. That's all I had. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Village manager update? Village manager update, first on the list for village manager update is Alan Pennington, Vice President of Matrix Consulting Group, is here to give us a kind of a rough draft of where they're at on their uh, their program that they're doing for us. Thank you for inviting me tonight. Now, I'll give you a quick background. About a year ago, uh, you asked us to work with you to do a staffing operational assessment of the village. Um, that was then put on hold while you went out to do your community survey because they, you wanted us to incorporate the findings from that uh, as part of our study. So we did receive a, a draft of those survey findings uh, in February. So we got back in touch. Uh, with your administrator and we started the process again to bring to conclusion our review and to give you a report in about a, a month, month and a half. Um, knowing that you're going into budget, they thought it'd be beneficial if I came tonight and gave you sort of a quick high level overview of preliminary staffing findings so that you at least have that information for context as you're looking at development of a budget. So I'm going to do that in, in the major areas and then ask any questions or answer any questions that you may have. Um, when we looked at the administrative function, generally it is pretty lean. There aren't a lot of staff um, allocated to those functions and there's very few administrative or secretarial components. Um, having said that, preliminarily we're not recommending staffing increases there. Um, we were going to recommend that you fill the vacancies that were existing in there, principally in the uh, accountant position and you've already done that. Uh, in, in the last year. So um, while you're still lean, we think you're okay uh, for continuing services at the current level. We may have some longer range suggestions based upon potential changes in service delivery or technology implementations. Um, our preliminary thoughts when we first came here and interviewed staff to look at your programs and your workload is the principal area where you have an unmet need was in the broad category we'll call maintenance functions, whether that's streets, cemeteries, parks, and utility related. Um, when we looked at the survey results, the preliminary ones, um, the areas that most of your residents indicated a need for enhanced services or a willingness to pay for enhanced services or see some change was in parks, uh, street maintenance, and similar items like that. Um, one of the things we're looking at is how can you reallocate existing resources to put greater focus on those maintenance functions and that may mean making some adjustments to current service levels such as um, the pickups that you do um, and reducing those uh, if you choose to do so. Otherwise, if you don't reduce some service levels, you will. the only option then is to increase um, revenues or expenditures in that area. And there's clearly a need for some additional staff and maintenance. Um, probably at least initially two positions. Um, I think that's consistent with some preliminary discussions you've been having. But that's the area where you're not maintaining uh, preventive maintenance programs that are recommended and you're gonna continue to fall behind um, if you don't do that. Um, you have an unmet need, especially in the streets and some other areas that is going to be harder to address if you, we understand you went through the whole pavement management assessment and, and identified all your needs. Um, that's a pretty big ticket item to address, but you can start by at least getting on a better preventive maintenance program. So in the maintenance area, we are going to be focusing a lot on what are reasonable standards and giving you some guidelines you can use in the future as you continue to grow and your street network and other infrastructure network expands, what's the staffing that would be required? Uh, but there is an unmet need there, so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Um, that brings us to the, the final big area, which is police. Um, we are not immediately 
our preliminary analysis of the data doesn't show a need for additional officers at this point. Uh, currently, you have a proactivity level based upon calls for service of around 75%. Um, that's very good. Um, most communities of your size would, would like to achieve somewhere around 50 to 60, 65% proactivity. So you're above that, which, which doesn't mean you necessarily have to reduce staffing. That's obviously something you could look at. But it does mean you have capacity to handle additional uh, community-generated calls for service uh, with that existing complement. Um, so that's sort of the high-level review of, of that. Um, when we present the report here in, in the next month, month and a half or so, you'll see a lot of information in there, um, especially on police because we have some really good data of when the calls for service are coming in, what day of the week, what time of the day, so that you can, you can look at are there other ways we could allocate staff and how could we dedicate that proactivity to the way that best engages with our community. So, uh, but the good thing is, good from an uh, expenditure perspective is there isn't a need to add additional staff immediately. Um, so that's sort of the big overview, um, just so that you have some context as you're going into your budget cycle. Lean on administrative in general, um, understaffed and not really giving as much focus on the preventive maintenance and maintenance activities that you should in comparison to other communities and best practices, and police you are in good shape right now. So. With that, I'll, I'll open it up to you. And uh, when we come back with the final report, in addition to the staffing analysis, there'll also be some uh, comments in there about operational practices and other things you can do to become more efficient and effective or better utilize technology. Um, we need to be obviously careful of that because with technology, every implementation that you want to put in place requires staffing to implement it, support it, and maintain it. So we need to be judicious in, in what we look at there. But where it has a, a real return on investment, you know, we want to identify that for you. When you talk about you'll get into the operations, what do you mean in terms of operations? Well, well so for example, when, when we look at um, each of the department's operational, you know, if there are clear process issues that are impacting stack productivity or, or inhibiting the amount of work that they can perform, we would identify that. Um, on the maintenance side, we always look at crew sizes to say, are you using crew sizes effectively? Do you have the right number of people assigned? Because uh, if you have too many, then that's another way to reallocate resources. Um, we did early on in the process review the collective bargaining agreements to give some feedback um, regarding is there anything in those that are impediments to improving operations? Because those are things you have to negotiate if you want to make operational changes that you've already negotiated uh, with the unions. Um, so those are the type of things we look at. Um, if there are manual processes and there's opportunities to automate that where it's cost effective and there's a return, we'll talk about those also. Okay. So for example, with the summer coming up and like the summer rep program, would you would that be a feature of something you'd look at and and do you include like peer communities and what they're doing as examples of best practices or we, we do on major functions if there are or if there are specific areas that you want to ensure we address, then I would suggest make sure you just compile those and, and uh, get, get me an email and we'll make sure we look at it. Because we did do a comparison with some peer communities in terms of staffing. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there are key things you want to look at, we'd absolutely include that in that. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Oh, no problem. My pleasure. Anyone else? OK. Thank you. Anything more? Okay. Do you want to discuss the waste and leaf bag uh, uh, policy, or, or, or you know, we, we've kicked that around. We've talked about uh, you know looking at a single waste hauler, and then we backed off from that. Uh, I guess we're we're getting close to the point where. I need a feel from the board on whether we want to stay in the uh, business of picking up leaf bags for a month in the spring and a month in the fall, and whether we want to continue picking up branches for a week to a week and a half every month of the year. If, if we are, like, like Alan said, then we need to look at additional staffing then to be able to hire more people to be able to take care of those projects and still have a crew to be able to go out and repair the roads. Do you need other equipment or is it just staffing? Well, 
we would we could continue to do it the way that we are now and do it with staffing uh, but it would be essentially those folks job to do that non-stop so instead of trying to get it all done in a month it might take them a month and a half or so to go around and pick up all the leaf bags because there'd be less of them doing it uh, the same thing with uh, the branch pickup so well I, w I would like to see us do this uh, I don't know I guess you call it in, in three tiers um, mm -hmm. I look at it as um, you know you put together pretty much the cost of what it is today, right, in, in the sheet that you gave us. So we're, we're running a deficit on that right now. It's costing us more than what we're bringing in to, to, to utilize the service as it is today. So what would it cost if we contracted a, a similar service from a, from a village perspective, so if we were to outsource that essentially, that, that service? So what would that cost? And then additionally, if we didn't go down that road, then what would it cost? Um, so, what would the the uh, impact be of dropping it altogether? I think I so I've done some research on the first question, and actually uh, Springfield's talking about this right now. Mm -hmm. And they recently put out an article in SJR, and they mentioned that they are looking to move away from this. Uh, sort of seasonal approach where the village does it, you know, like in the spring and in the fall to just doing it all year round. And like all year, right? You know, it's from like March to August or something. They're March to November. It's not technically all year, but they, in that article, they noted that Springfield's existing cost to do this was 527K roughly, which is about $4.60 per citizen based on like calculations, which you may want to double check. Uh, the, uh, the new program would be 770K, which is like $6.70 per person. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because it, it, it sounds to me that the city of Springfield outsources this to waste haulers because they're talking about this confusion of the stickers having to go out and buy them and then apply them and then what happens when the hauler doesn't see the sticker and is it in the right window? It's evidently creating a lot of confusion in Springfield. So the village or the city of Springfield is looking to essentially increase their expenditures by 250 K in order to just make it easier on people. Is that both leafs and branches? Yes. Yeah. Is it? And you know, I guess the other thing, I know this decision will be made after I'm gone from the board, but you take a look at the amount of time that, our street department is spending on the branch pickup and just as he mentioned maybe they'd be better used for repairing the streets the sidewalks uh, to me that would be a lot more efficient use <clears throat> however if it's decided to continue this service with our employees then basically you need to give them the right equipment so they can do it safely and efficiently right and that's that's where I was going with it really because again if if you take the Springfield approach and just do it all year round at, again at 670 per citizen based on the cost of 263 which is what was presented here in this draft with our rough estimate of population we're at $21 per citizen so it's not that's not a slight to the employees that are doing the work or I mean obviously there's fixed costs but I think that it's just if, if we're going to ask for these folks to keep doing it, let's get them the tools to do it right and quickly and safely. And then our cost per will obviously drop, you know, because we'll be working more efficiently. But. Uh, <clears throat> Once again, then you're taking away from what they should really be doing as far as the streets and sidewalks. Right, right. which is, yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to the right spot on this because I thought they are their three dollars, I believe, is just for the leaf programs. Yeah, they have a three dollar recycling fee that I read here, and um, there's there's a, a whole slew of them. Yeah. So the current program is paid for through the city's waste and recycling fee, which is three dollars per month, and is collected on bills for every CWLP bill or customer. So even though there's enough funds to cover it for this year, we're going to have to juggle around some money and figure out how we're going to pay it in future years. So is it worth our time to do, we'd have to do an RFP to see if a private 
hauler could do it and what they would do, what price they would do it at? Or do we want to consider? So that's they basically that's allow, but the, but the thing with, what you're clearing on. The yeah. thing with the RFP for the waste haulers is you have that already. If you were going to put leaf bags out, yeah, go buy a sticker and put it on there, and the waste hauler will come take it away. Right. Well, I think you have two choices. Either we're going to stay in the business or everybody goes to stickers like the process is already set up and it works. All the waste haulers will pick up your leaf bags for you or your, or your yard waste, whether it's grass clippings. It doesn't have to be leaf bags. They'll pick up anything. You put it in the right size bag and they put it on there, they pick it up. That way it's taken care of. We don't have to go out for an RFP and then you're not you're not charging someone in a brand new subdivision that has absolutely no trees or no uh, or who mulches their or grass. mulches their their yards and stuff a fee to pay for someone else. I, I think you can do it that way, or we stay in the business and we raise the fee from two bucks to five bucks. I hire a couple people and see how they do with the equipment that they, we've got. If we need different equipment. We'll look at it and have to adjust accordingly, but I, I, my preference and my staff's preference is to get out of the business and let the professional waste haulers take care of it. Well, it, <clears throat> my concern with our staff doing it is I doubt we're rated for on that for work comp, too. I, I don't think that's in their job description, is it? It's a duties as assigned. Oh, duties right. As assigned. Yeah. So it's in there. So the the biggest thing, and we we see this, and and Alan mentioned it when you do it, the the pickups are enhancements in in services to it. So if you ask here about a fifty fifty on this, some people like to have the leaf bags. If you've got a big tree in your yard, you like to have the leaf bags. If you don't have a tree in your yard, you don't you don't want to do it. Uh, one of the things that did get pointed out repeatedly, you talk through waste, is let people make their own choice. Correct pay for the service that they want and that they need. And this is a, a critical function of our village. We see repeatedly through the surveys, what they want people focused on is, is the basics of what we need to do. And that's streets, sidewalks, parks, those things we have to do. Right now, you know, and, and you can see on the spreadsheet where the labor of the guys that can fix our streets in house is being spent on picking up branches and leaves and that's ineffective. So we, we cannot continue down that path to me, the, the do we have a consensus then to stop the green fee and put it back on people for their own choice of what they want? Well, my, my question, I guess, is, you know, and I guess we, we've had this situation with trash and stuff too, but when people, like, you know, your neighbor may be good about raking leaves and getting his sticks out, but then you have neighbor two houses down that five falls go by and he doesn't rake his leaves and, you know, I mean, do we need to add something that says, you know, the village will fine you if you don't, if your leaves get too deep or your sticks get too That's high? There. It's a nuisance. Yeah. You, you, if your yard is con construed a nuisance, uh, then Ryan will go out and notify you. And, uh, like right now, if you let your grass grow taller than nine inches, he'll go and give you a notice that you, you need to mow it. If you don't, you're coming to court. If you still don't mow it, we'll go mow it and then charge you, and you still go to court. So we wouldn't need anything new or different for that then? I don't think so. I mean, I think we just need to do a good job of letting the public know that you are responsible now for your own services in that. We're not going to take $2 a month from you, but you can, if you want to still bag your leaves, put stickers on them. If you want to mulch them, you can mulch them. You can turn around and blow them all into the corner of your yard and leave them there if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. It's your yard. Uh, and, and two, like I said before, <clears throat> um, and I think it's on our website about, bur about the burning because we can burn sticks, and some may not know about. And we that. can, and that Just might be something sure. that we look at. That's, that's when it changed because yeah. on the sticks, for some odd reason, you can't do it on a Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Yeah. So if if you're truly just burning branches or a tree without a lot of green leaves or anything like that on it, I, I don't see why you couldn't allow for burning every day out of the week as long as the wind is down. 
right? So like if I'm you know, out So there, that way it's not confusing to people. They're like, oh, I started burning. To be, so to be clear, we're not talking about allowing burning grass. No grass, no, no leaves, no, leaves, no, yard, no uh, This is just essentially wood that wood. came out of a tree. Yeah. And, and so if, it, which, if it's Halloween night, can it's, be done it's now. a Monday night, and you know, I put a fire pit out, I can burn wood on a Monday night. Yes. Right? Not construction material, just right. tree branches. Yeah. So you got twigs, there's your, there's your kindling. <laughs> I mean, but what most people do in their driveways now anyway. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think the other part of the discussion that probably needs to continue with the trash haulers, uh, yeah, the other complaint is I hear trash trucks and see them each and every day. Uh, you know, I see mine once a week, but all the others are coming through uh, the week, is, you know, continue that discussion uh, as far as saying, okay, you know what? Tuesdays and Thursdays, or Tuesdays and Fridays, are when you have to come into Chatham. Uh, when you come into Chatham, don't be bringing, you know, your truck three fourths of the way full with Springfield uh, garbage. So I think that's a discussion that can, needs to continue yep. uh, to see how that can tighten up and still make it work, you know, with the waste haulers, but also make it work for the residents uh, here in Chatham. And I talked to the way, a couple of the waste haulers when we were talking about the RFP and there didn't seem to be much opposition to that. If the, if the village would like to declare two days as garbage pickup days for residents, not commercial, but right. residents, I, I think that we might be able to work out some kind of an agreement between them all. That'd be good. I think this is an important discussion. I, I know when I walked two years ago, street repairs is one of the number one things that people are gonna <clears throat> talk to you about. And I, as Alan pointed out, in, in his findings with the unmet need there and related to this and what Dave talked about. Because I know as I've been talking to people in terms of the leaf bag program, it it's, it's matters where people live. Mm -hmm. If you're in certain areas where there's a, they're putting out 30 bags and it's more economical for them, for the village to do it. But if you're in areas with not a lot of trees, you know, and you mulch, as Pat said, you know. So I, it's tough because it's gonna be, it's gonna impact different geographic locations differently. You're basically switching that cost. Uh, but it is, as the discussion went in this, in, with the single waste hauler, let me make my choice. You know, and, and right now, if you take a look, you, can, you can't hardly drive around town without seeing a mowing service on somebody's street. So those those folks saw an opportunity and i think people will see an opportunity here that you know hey i go into the older neighborhoods there's a lot of leaves to be picked up i can or buy a piece of equipment and go in there and take care of this yard and this yard and this yard and you're essentially charging around the same price as it would be to mow something yeah you know so i i think those opportunities are there the same thing with the branch pickup somebody's looking for a job, they've got a truck, or they can go and buy an older truck and stuff and be able to turn around. They have somebody that can take it out on a you know one acre lot someplace out in the country and burn the stuff. Well, I think I, there's opportunities for small business people to be able to turn around and take advantage of this. So if we go <clears> forward <throat> in this route, what I want to make sure that we as a, you know, the village board and the administration would make clear is why we're making this switch. So if they see the fee go away, and then all of a sudden there's certain parts of the town's like, I've got to pay this on my own. We want to know, make sure they know why they're doing that is so there's more effort being put into their streets being repaired. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that we communicate that clearly. I, I think, you know, everyone that gets a utility bill, I think it'd be worth it to pay that little extra and put that one flyer in there explaining our new policy and send it to every house. That way when they get the utility bill, there'll be an extra letter and they're explaining that. Yeah, one thing, too, that I want to make sure we pay attention to is the timing of it, because I think, you know, most people probably think in terms of a calendar year and they're saying, oh, I've already paid, you know, this is June 1st, I'm getting my notice that this thing is over, but I've already paid six months into the program. So I think we should, well, if we were to make a change, I think we should just be cognizant of the timing of it that, like, maybe we should do it on December 31st or January well, we're 1st or I mean, we're running fiscal right now. year, the, whatever. The right. Bags are just going out, so... It, there's, there's sense to me to do it with a budget here. Right. So the bags are going out, so we're not, you know, saying. Yeah, we don't want to buy more bags. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so what you're running is you're running a 
you're at 50 percent deficit on it right now. So I'm, that's the thing. So every time you do another cycle through the right. thing, you're, you're going backwards. Jeff, you had. Yeah, something. I was just going to talk a little bit about the process and then about that question as well. So one of the things Pat and I have talked about, if, if you're going to go down this route and effectuate this, uh, we'd probably, if there's a consensus, bring back an ordinance at the next meeting. Correct. One of the options uh, in doing so, uh, to the extent there is any money in the green fees, and you guys have done this in the past, is amend that and potentially expand that uh, program, and maybe it becomes, you know, you, you purchase a piece of equipment for street cleaning or sweeping or something like that. Um, so you still, there's still kind of a green program uh, maybe you expand that and at the same time start to, you know, decrease or eliminate that fee so, you know, it's you're not charging it anymore. Um, but, um, you know, d somehow take into account and, and as, as you said, explain within that ordinance and within, within that new policy what exactly the intent is and what the village is going to be doing with that. So process-wise, we would come back with some documents for the board to review and approve. The, cur the current street sweeper that we have is he, very old and it's through. broke all the time. We spend more money to fix it than it would be to probably go out and get a new one. Right. So we, we need a new one of those. And Shane ran the numbers on if, you know, how we rented the Vaxter with a lease for five years. We could do the same type of thing with a street sweeper. That way we don't get stuck with one that's broke all the time. We could do that and then still do you know, while we do the two-week uh, cleanup in the fall where we have all the dumpsters down at the park, we could offer that once in the spring, you know, maybe right after all the garage sales, and then another time in the fall. So we have both of those, and then the street sweeper, and he thought that he could fund that with a dollar per month. I would have a hard time not returning that, um, honestly, because here, here's the <clears throat> thing that I'm going to throw out as a bone of caution for all of us is... If we stop that program, we're right now we're paying two dollars on our utility bill, two fifty on our utility bill. The two dollars, right? So it's two dollars. One tag for a bag costs two fifty. So now you've increased the cost for our citizens to do that to 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 bag their leaves. Even though it it, it still costs them in the long run because we're the you know we're the taxing body, but we're going to spend it elsewhere. It's just it's going to there will be ramifications for us um, in in the cost in the you know the the cost benefit for the citizens is not going to they're not going to see it that way you know they're they're not the, the two dollars a month return isn't going to outweigh them paying two 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 dollars and fifty cents per bag to have it hauled off right and I think that so goes to that, Paul's that's a point. that's a tough that's a, a tough um, yeah, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. I think okay. it goes to Paul's point, though, where certain areas are upset that they have to pay $2 because mm -hmm. no, they've absolutely. never bagged a leaf in their entire life. So, again, you know, we've all talked to folks, and it's been 50-50 split mm -hmm. uh, every single time I talk yeah. about so, it. So like Jeff said, though, is the consensus to do away with it and do away with the $2 fee, or is a consensus to do away with it and have some sort of fee so they can do a street sweeper and do the two things in the spring and fall. That's what we have to decide. Right. Or Give Jeff is. direction right. of what we want to see back here as an ordinance. I, th I think there are other programs in the green fee that are, is it primarily just going to the leaves at this point? We do the leaves, we use it for the branches, and we use it for the fall cleanup, the two, uh, or the two, weeks, two weeks that we have the dumpsters. In the bags. Those three things. Yeah, purchase all the bags. And the bags. And the purchase of the bags. Yep. But, and, you know, and we're talking about the cost here, and I look at this, that the leaf bag pickup is not the expensive part to the village. It's the limbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's the thing that I don't hear. So, I mean, maybe it's something, I mean, because we're weighing this back and forth on the 50-50 on the leaf bags, and there is a cost benefit to the people in certain areas of the town that the village continue that service. I mean, maybe it's something where we split off. Maybe you do it this step by step. We just, the limbs, you know, if you need your limbs taken away, um, there's certain, a list of providers of, that 
citizens could call to have the, the limbs taken away and that, because that's a lot of time every month by our staff for, for the most expensive part of this program. So maybe we just isolate that part. It's the most expensive. It's not the part that I hear from people that a service that they want to keep. Um, so maybe that's the part we split off is we stop doing the limb pickup. I, I personally, you know, after going through the RFP and hearing that people want their own choice would be for not doing leaves or limbs. Both? Yeah, because I know there's a, half of the town doesn't want leaf pickup. And, you know, that may be you take a look at it and say, okay, we're going to rip that Band-Aid off once. Yes, it's going to hurt, but eventually it's going to be better. Uh, once again, I know I will not be here, but... Uh, You're still a citizen. To, that's true, but... Now to, to clarify, the leafs are half the cost. you got to get through all the lines. Because you got labor right. in the spring, okay. labor in the fall, materials, plus you have all the disposal costs that go with waste haulers. Once you pick them all up, okay. they still have to go somewhere. Yeah, you know, based yeah. on that top line there, the, the limbs for 10-day 10 average, 10 average is the deficit, essentially. So you drop you drop limbs and now you're breaking even. Yeah, but you haven't accomplished the goal of getting your street crew back to on repairing street. streets. Yep. Okay. So, so again, do we have a consensus of what we want to see Jeff try to put together for the next meeting? I would put forward that the two dollar. He goes away, and we stop that process. If somebody wants to see the dollar uh, to help with other things, that's we need to tell Jeff now so he can bring it to the board. Well, you know, I do think uh, by eliminating uh, the entire two dollars per month, you are definitely giving something a little bit more back versus just that dollar which then is going to require you to um, still come up with a funding source, you know, for your sweeper uh, and the other things. Uh, we can, you know, this, this, the street sweeper we need, so we can try to find the funding for that out of the general fund, but uh, it doesn't have to come through this green program. Right. So there, there's ways to be able to fund that. So, yeah. So, Jeff, could you draft an ordinance that says we'll do away with the $2 fee and we'll do away with picking those things up or providing those services and the reason for it, you know, that Paul had kind of indicated? And then we can have further discussion at that point. The dates that you publish for the current pickup go through when? Uh, let's see, we start, let's see, leaf bags you can pick up tomorrow for the next, I think, two weeks. And then we start picking up bags for at least a month after that. You, um, ma'am, you can't talk during while we're talking. So there'll be public comments, and I'll call on you. Hey, Pat, so you, essentially, the I'm sorry, the, the ordinance that you'll have coming up, Jeff, will that which we've already publicized will happen. Yeah, it would be the the fall side of it that wouldn't. Okay, fall 2019. Like, like, I think, like you guys said, you know, we could aim for, we, we could stop, we could, even make, we could probably stop the collection uh, for the first June, we could go June, June 1st, that way we wouldn't pick up branches anymore in June, and, and so, so June, July, August, September, October, yeah. November, December, yeah, your winter. half the year, so. You, you, you'd have to time to be able to trim whatever trees and get them out there for the remainder of April and May. Okay. And then June 1st, we would cease picking up branches, and then there would not be a fall leaf bag pickup, and those would just fall back on the waste haulers and stuff. Right. So how soon would we get that word out, though, for people to know that? Well, we prove it, it at the totally next meeting, will. be on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. Try to get it out of the May. Could we see a maybe uh, draft a letter for us too that'll go in the utility bill sure. that we could look at for next meeting. And when would you think as soon as that letter 
could be included in the utility bill, you know, to, to be able to provide them with a month-to-month -month notice. I'll, I'll show you how it will work. When the May bills go out. See, that's my concern. If we say Ju June 1, they're going to find out. We've got other ways to alert people, too, between, yeah. the, between the news, our alert systems. Mm. Our... You didn't put it out through the 311 system, too? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, if, if, if June doesn't work out dates-wise, we can do it for July. I mean, it would be great to be able to get it done, as, but... If we can do that... But the, the problem is, is now you've... Gone into the new budget. Well, not only that, but yeah, also after your construction season. Exactly, we're trying to address. Yeah, right. Uh, you can still you can still do the three one one, so they get that early notice by before <clears> June <throat> one, and then and whenever they do, we all get the our utility statement at the end of May. You get that full explanation. I'm gonna guess for June. I'm gonna guess sixty percent of the town already knows. <laughs> As far as the leaf bags that we have out here now, do you know, did we order more? I remember last time we had them out, we ran out. Did we order a few more, or did we order the same amount? We ordered the same amount that we always do for the size town. We did. Uh, we put it in front put of it underneath a the video camera, camera, camera now of, instead uh, of. Place station. of right. I, uh, and, we'll see and, how much the usage changes. And, and that may have just that more, you know, we don't order enough bags that every single person can come up and get three bundles because every single person does not come up and get three bundles. But uh, they did seem to go awful fast last time. And, so, and when we leave them out there household. all weekend and there's nobody over there at that office, I think that's probably the time. When, but all right. I'm not accusing anybody of stealing. Any other uh, village manager updates? Uh, let's see. We went through that. Sherry's going to go over the appropriation thing next, I think. Can I get two? Can I get two of your updates? Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you didn't catch it when it first came out, um, we'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate Sherry again for the second year in a row. Our comprehensive financial report has been recognized by the uh, Government Finance Officers Association with certificates and reporting excellence, which is their highest level of openness, disclosure, and transparency, and uh, speaks to the quality of work that Sherry does, and, and now with Kayla's helping and learning how to do all that quality, but it's uh, it's quite an achievement for two years in a row, so certainly appreciate everything that you've done, Sherry. And Uh, also coming through at the beginning of May, we do have openings on some of our boards and commissions. Um, we, have, we have one term renews for the police commission and four terms that will renew on the parks commission. So if there is anybody that's interested in serving on volunteer committees for the village, uh, those five positions are going up. Send a letter of interest to Pat. There's further details about what those committees do on our web page. It's the first tab on the left. I think it's the About tab on the Village web page. One of those links says committee, says what each of those committees is responsible for doing. So we'll take letters of interest um, from, the current, from the current members as well as anybody else that might be interested in doing it. So uh, those are going to put those out. Um, and Pat's email will be the address to submit letters of interest. Pretty sure my email's on there somewhere. Okay. Uh, I guess one other thing uh, that I talked to Pat about a little bit, uh, I've got the information for you, uh, basically going way present. Uh, with the uh, elections uh, and annexing in the additional, what, 600 individuals roughly uh, within the village. 58 households. Oh, is that how many it was? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but then there's also other property that we have annexed in since the last census, and knowing that uh, we're probably about two years away before the next census will be certified, there is a process to uh, submit additional annexed property with those individuals uh, to receive additional motor fuel tax funds. 
this is strictly through the Illinois Department of Transportation, uh, and roughly it's $25 per person uh, per year. Uh, so, you know, it's possible that we could see an increase of 15 to 20 plus thousand for the next two years, and then depending on where the census gets certified at, then of course that will then rule. Uh, but it does require some things, so I'll pass this off to Pat to kind of take a look at uh, to see whether or not it's something the village wants to move forward with. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yep. Before you move on, are you done with those? I, I did have a quick question. On the, um, I saw the email with the summer rec program stuff coming up, mm -hmm. and it made me think of last year when we talked about that, and I was just curious on the status of that, if we were thinking about doing the online. We, or, we just purchased a new scheduling software for all of our, our uh, uh, park programs, okay? So we'll be able to schedule all the diamonds, put all of the different programs on there and then schedule all that stuff. Now, probably is not gonna happen in this year, but next year when there's projects and stuff, you'll be able to go directly onto that web page, sign up for a class and pay for it with your credit card. When you say class, you mean the summer rec programs, the camp? Yeah, yeah. anything that, that that's being offered, you'd be able to sign up. Are we are we administering the sports clubs as well? You know, like uh, Chuck Chatham Chatter. Oh my God, Chatham Soccer Association. Or are that's we all just the words in one? We, yeah. we we will we will <laughs> schedule all the diamonds and all the fields and all the football fields out for when they need them. And then they're available then for the public to be able to use. It'll have in there what the price is for using them with lights. And then, like I said, our recent contracts that we have with all the different sports groups, they're paying for all the water and electricity when they use those fields. On those contracts, and I felt bad after we, uh, <clears throat> we took our vote, and it was my fault not doing my due diligence, I was under the impression that that had already gone through the park, so that's good that we've appointed Dewey to there. But that those had not gone through and been vetted by the, the Parks and Recreation Committee prior to us, had, what were they? They did not, you they took... went through uh, Dustin and, my, and myself, and we went over them and we called each of the different groups in and negotiated back and forth on what we expected out of them. Essentially, they're the same as what they were last year. That was except the, for that was we the told direction them that was given. If you're when the park committee shrunk, and the sports groups were removed from it, right? That was what was the negotiating, park committee negotiating there. So that was the direction that was given at that point in time because they're not present in that group. To right. Do it, it wasn't you know have one group write a contract that a party was not into. So that was the direction that was given with somebody that was now a foreman covering that area. And Pat, that was the direction it was given. So that's that, why it went that, that avenue. But to that point, when I when I look at the ordinance for for that committee, it says that there is uh, that the Parks and Rec Committee uh, reviews annually the program. Um, so I I think I don't know if that's specifically to the summer rec program, but it says that they re they review that direction each year, and that there should be a report to the board by April one of each year. Was that were the park was the parks commission okay with those contracts? That's my real question. I think what you got to do is look back and finish the corrections to that whole committee. And this is one of the things that Dewey's going to take on in there is, right. is get its focus. Is what is it really doing? What can it really do? Where are the powers that are in it? Can we and organize that correctly? Can we ask that the parks look at those contracts and see if they're okay with them? Yeah. Again, I don't mean to speak for the. The recreation committee but yeah that's absolutely something that I want to take a look at the the contracts again I know that there's an understanding of to Dave's point is what is the group's function what isn't the group's function and then once those are established then I think we should you know give that crew of volunteers the time that they deserve and the attention that they deserve so that's what I want to bring to it okay but the, I, the, the problem always has been is that having committees like that without having trustees on it is like having a committee with no teeth. Right. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they can come up with a lot of ideas, but if they don't have a person to come back and argue the point for them or be champion the cause, right. it makes it a lot harder. I mean, 
That, that's why it, I, I think it's really valuable that we did appoint Dewey to that. Yeah, I, agreed. Um, so there is there are some teeth for that committee because I think they're important. We all think the parks are important. But the, and, and that'll be a good thing, too, because then he'll be aware of what our <coughs> budgeting restraints are. And, you know, just like we're going to have Massey and Massey sit down and, and talk to, to their group, as well as this group and as well as the public. They'll have public meetings and stuff to find out really what Chatham really wants to see inside each of the parks and stuff and what they what they expect things to look like and how often they expect things to be taken care of and and and, and, and look forward to the next 10, 15 years of what our parks are going to look like. Everybody will have input into that and then we'll use that as the guideline going forward. Correct. The problem is, is if you have that as your guideline going forward and you have someone come in and says, well, you know, may maybe a dog park doesn't show up on that list, but then all of a sudden somebody comes in, gets on the parks committee and wants a dog park and that's the new hot item and it was, well, wait a minute, we had a company come in here, they did all this review, there really wasn't that big of an outcry and, and I'm not saying there's not people that want a dog park, I'm just using that as an example, but that's the thing that you risk when you have unelected committees. Right. Yeah, so what I think, what I'd like to do is if we can get a, if we get a list of all of the subcommittees and who's on them, mm -hmm. so we can review it right here in this one month from today and kind of review that, that list and, and you know, start from there. And, well, yeah, just, every one yeah. of those is on the village web page. Right. Yeah, I, I know. I, right. I know. But I'll, I'll print them out for you guys, and yeah. you can see when their their dates expire and who's on them and stuff like that. But, but even and I appreciate Dewey going on to that, and I think. But even with that, even with trustees being on the various committees, um, just looking at that one ordinance and saying like a report will be given to the board, I think that would be good. With that list, to also say that and, and stagger it that there, there would be a report. I mean, and it could be from one of the trustees, but a yearly report from all these committees, um, if nothing else, to beg a discussion on what that committee's direction will be for the next year. I mean, and, and, and so that gives us that proactive approach of engaging with all the committees, even from trustee to committee, but I, and, to, and it would make sense through the budget process as well. But I think of having, defining what the communication will be and how often and, right. I don't know that we'll need the communication piece for for the ones that have trustees on them because they should be giving it to us every week. That's the only that's the only one that's not designated by law what it's doing or didn't presently have right. a trustee involved. Right. Every other one of them has a report out method, whether it's zoning comes with recommendation, right. planning and they have always to. comes with a recommendation. Right. So they're already dictated very much on that. Right. Arc is pretty free form discussion is what they've been doing and that's you know as long as we have Dewey you know if we have his update it'll be in our minutes right but you'll see the what you'll see with the engagement with the, right. with the engagement of Kim Massey to do you. maintenance plan like the parks that you guys are assigned right. to do. that's I would call it a, it's parks comprehensive plan for lack of a better easy sure. term on it so that what that's going to do that that will engage them in in doing that and that becomes a deliverable that comes through that committee right um, okay anything else you're going to have to from the from a board or from a committee the whole down you have to direct them and say we want this so if it's right. you know if it's a one-off if it's a consistent thing you have to give the direction otherwise they're going to go on their own not meet or have yeah. whatever discussion and, that, and that's, I, that's I, what hasn't happened yeah, I, and I agree. We can go back to the zoning issue we had about the, the duplex issue, right? We I believe it states in our ordinance that we're supposed to be getting a report from the, the zoning board, of, you know, from the zone board. You know, we didn't get that, right? We didn't get that. So, you know, those, these are the kind, but this is exactly why I think we just need to have that, that discussion and figure out, like you just said, what it is that we want from them to be able to, to, to continue with the proper decision. And that's why I brought up with the communication. I, mm -hmm. We have in an ordinance that the board gets a report from this Parks and Rec committee by April 1 of each year, and that, you know, hadn't happened. So, we, and, and they don't know to do that. So I think we need to make sure that that's clear. Is that still the direction of what we want to do? Maybe we, we don't with a trustee 
on there now because it's you know it's not needed. Um, but I think we need to clean that up and decide clarify clarify that mm -hmm. how that's going to move forward. Yeah, it'll just make everybody's job. Yeah. Yes, update. I think we can update that. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you like the Parks and Rec to draft an update, or you guys just want to take care of it? Yeah, you do both. I would say. Yeah. I would say on on the front side, the board's got to answer first. What is it you guys want to see? Mm -hmm. And I don't because the committee in any committee that we've got is a arm of your work. Right. So if you can't define what your work is for that arm, there's nothing for them to do. Right. So it starts with the board say, here's the work we need done. Review the contracts. <laughs> so would be one. I mean, but then other things is to look at. I mean, but you're right. We haven't given them direction, and I follow it. You know, that's on ours. Yeah, that's on uh, us. On us. And now that we have a trustee, um, hopefully Dewey brings things to him, too, which I know he will and they'll share with us. But we probably could look at that ordinance at doing away with the reporting requirement for that. Doing uh, away with what requirement? With the reporting, the annual first review. reporting requirement. I don't think an annual review is a bad idea. No. Just to, yep. I want to state that. Yeah. No, we could. We could I, how about I suggest you put it on a future committee. We'll come up with some, some Ideas. questions on it. Everybody can actually sit and review. What's right. in it? Yep. Look through it. <laughs> Come on. Correct. I think the real All right. Of that was kind of sports to give us okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, transferring appropriation authority between line items and adopting supplemental appropriations for fiscal year 2019. Sure. This is this. Okay, um, in front of you, you have a handout in regards to the preliminary recommendation for the appropriation amendment for fiscal year 2019 budget. And um, from this, an ordinance will be prepared for approval at the April 23rd board meeting. And these estimates are preliminary and they're going to be reviewed again just prior to April 23rd. Um, there are supplemental appropriations being proposed. One is for the Yard Waste Recycling and Refuse Fund and the other is for the Veterans Memorial Fund. Now for the uh, proposed su supplemental appropriation for the Yard Waste Recycling and Refuse Fund, um, that amount is 86400 and that is to fund the reallocation of the street department salary and other payroll expense. As you discussed earlier, what we are charging off to that fund, our fund for those services for um, branch pickup and leaf bed pickup, um, most of it, 15% uh, of uh, the street salaries are, are being charged to the general fund, uh, or I mean, being charged to the yard waste fund. In actuality, I think that amount is probably should be about 33% of their salary should be allocated into the uh, yard waste fund and we'll be making an adjustment before year end so to be able to reflect that adjustment in our budget um, that uh, supplemental appropriation is being recommended and then for the veterans memorial fund there's uh, about $200 additional ex expenses in excess of what we originally budgeted for so there's a supplemental appropriation being recommended for $200. So the attachments are just a summary of the shifts between line items, um, showing where we're shifting things. Um, all other um, funds, uh, department line items are, uh, shifts between department line items are just proposed for the general fund departments, the electric fund, water and sewer funds. So there's no additional appropriations involved there. Um, again, I will be reviewing these before the meeting, and if there are any changes, I'll let you know with a similar format. Any questions? Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Right, next, uh, Utility Oversight Committee discussion. <coughs> um, I was unable to be here, but Ryan, were you the chair or Mr. Scherzer? 
I was the chair for what it's worth. <laughs> you sir? <laughs> the chairing of a bee. <laughs> was the best chairing we've ever seen. <laughs> I sat well. <laughs> um, it was an efficient meeting. Yeah. The update is there weren't any updates from the Sangamon, you know, the, the Water Commission. Um, they're still stalled out in their their transfer to the uh, to the chloramines. Um, and that's kind of where it sits. They, you know, they've got a, they've got some new people targeted to be hired, and you know, so are they, they're still short staffed. They have two new hires, and <laughs> they are looking at hiring a third. I think that would put them at their highest level ever of having three employees over there. Then, even when Woodard and Kern was managing it. Um, I think it's it's down to a comfort level. Uh, I think Bill was on vacation for a while, and the new guy that was the plant manager, he's just coming in. And I don't think those two have got a chance to work together to go over the process on how the chloramines go in. Also, uh, the, the engineer that designed it from, from Miko, he's been out working on the pigging station and stuff when they're putting that in now. Uh, so they ha they are making some progress out there. They do have the the new membranes ordered. They those have not come in yet. Like I said, those membranes are ones from purchased in the United States and, instead of overseas where they were before. Uh, they're hoping for good things with those. Um, I'm hoping within the next couple weeks that that they'll be up and ready to go. But. I, I'm tired of saying that, you know, it should be next week because I, I just don't know anymore. Right. And and I, I know I know they're they know we're frustrated, but would it be appropriate to simply put together a schedule of items that need to be completed and then once all eighteen are done, then the conversion is is in effect or is completed or is beginning? Again, maybe that's just how my job works, but, um, you know, you, you got a to-do list, you knock off one thing, and, and with each item, you say, you know, uh, meet with Bob, um, and you give an estimated time frame as when that's going to be completed, and then I go to my boss and say, look, Bob was sick, or whatever. Like, you have to explain every variance of, of your plan, and sometimes you just, I, I don't mean this, I haven't been involved to their degree, but sometimes you just have to get it done because you, you said it was going to be done by July 11th and it's July 10th. So whatever, again, I'm, I'm just rambling, but my point is I feel like we should have a schedule of the items that need to be accomplished and a, a, a date, a due date for each item, and then a report back to us when any individual item isn't met. That would be like the third or fourth time we've requested that. Yeah. But the, the, right. the problem is, is, is they're not our employees. We don't pay them other than through our water sales. Uh, the thing that we do have now is we do have Bill there keeping an eye on it and trying to make sure that they do everything right. Uh, I know Bill would not want for them to start using the chloramines before they're comfortable with using the chloramines and being able to handle it. And I don't think we would either. Right. You know, so I'm going to I'm going to fall back on his expertise and trust him that when chloramines go into effect, it'll be the right time for it. And that's all I can do. It it doesn't affect the quality of water right now. The only difference is if you happen to get a smell of chlorine at your house when we switch to chloramines, you won't get that smell. That's the only difference. So. It's it's not life or death, but we sure would like for them to switch to chloramines before we get into the heat of the summer and we have to buy water from Springfield. And if we have to mix it in our ground storage tank out there, we want both of them to be chloramines. Correct. So we're probably maybe a month, month and a half away from that. So are they going to come to us this year and ask for a rate increase? They had a scheduled rate increase two years ago. Right. It was a small one. It was like, 
I can't remember if it was 30 cents or 36 cents. We will incorporate it with our budget. I thought we had one more contractual. They, they yeah. scheduled a series. Yeah. 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 So we and, see and the last that I talked to Lee is that they are becoming profitable and they do not look at a rate increase other than what they had originally planned. Is the last time I talked to them. That was already approved? It was already approved by them and by, them. by this board. But we don't have another one that we need to approve. No, there will be another one. We need, we need to do our part. Yeah. Yeah, we need to. They, yeah. they set a three year schedule. We've been doing it annually. Yeah, they, we haven't approved it, but they've. We've been doing it with the budget. That's, that's the timing that we've been putting on. Yeah. So we, we have to approve it. And there's not a long time. They, we don't get to say, oh, we'll get to it next time. Yeah. We already yeah. agreed. Soon. To We'll, we'll pass it soon. Well, we'll pass it soon. Well, what the what the village used the, to do. The thing is, is that doesn't stop them. No, from charging. They'll us. they'll it get just it. Means that we're not collecting what. They'll get it one way or another. Right. Hence what, the what, frustration. What the it village is. used to do is we kick the can down the road because we didn't want to increase the rates, and then finally when we did increase the rates, it was huge. You know, it was huge as compared to that little tiny rate increase, and you know that's not something that. You know, I hope we continue and, you know, increases suck, but, you know, it, it's it's better to do it in that smaller amount than kick the can and tell, you know, we have to say, here's 5%, but look, figure it out. But, but look at our side, okay, where we've been able to add that one more water person to our staff. We haven't had to face a rate increase from in, internally. We're running lean and efficient, and we've got a really, really good crew now. Mm -hmm. So water main breaks, we're out there and we fix it in a matter of hours. The only thing that takes a little bit longer and costs a little bit more is when we get out of RAW 4 because we do not have a piece of equipment big enough to bust through the thick piece of concrete. So we hire an outside firm to come break through the concrete force, and then our crews go down and repair the water line, then they backfill it. We even did a patch out here the other day and poured the concrete on a Saturday out there on Route 4 uh, and decided to try doing that ourselves. So whenever we open that up in the future, unless it's in a driving lane, we're going to try to repair it if it's over in the, in the shoulder. So, But we do need help when uh, we have to turn around and open that thing up. It's working concrete. Months. We'd be out there forever trying to bust through it. Right. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ADA Transition Plan Committee update? Uh, basically, there was no meeting. There was an issue with uh, getting it, the agenda posted. Uh, therefore, we could not meet. Okay. Uh, Public Property and Recreation Committee discussion? I think we already had that. I think we already yeah. had that. <laughs> uh, public comments on village business. So I know the, did, did she leave? I, okay. I left me notes, but I, sure. I have I'm sure no one wants to be out here more than me right now. But I can't shut up. Um, so her her comment oh. was regarding the... Hold on. State your name so she can get it oh. for the minutes. Well, my name's Teresa Osborne. And do you know the other lady's name? <laughs> she said you guys know her. Debbie. But yeah. Debbie. Am I allowed to give her, your, your you, her comment? Or yes. Sure. Her? Yes. It was Diane Rogers. Diane. Diane Rogers. Okay. Um, she apparently, with regard to the stopping the leaf bags um, or putting that on individual residents, um, which personally I'm for, but um, she was just wanting to inform you that on College Street there is a resident who has numerous fines, wage garnishments, and burns trash and a dead tree in the front yard and has a six foot high stick pile in the backyard and her point is he he or she that person is already doing that now if you take away the leaf bags and, and the branch pickup it's going to be worse um i don't know if that's true okay but that's what her that's what she, she said oh. uh, there are possums in that big pile of 
Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if she should probably call and give you the address. Right. Yeah. It's already a nuisance. Issue. It's already. Yeah. Oh, you already know. I believe the no, I'm just saying that. as current. Exactly. It's already. Current. It's already yes, a nuisance. Uh, but that's what, anyway. The process for if you have things like that is to call the village office and tell them the address where the problem's at. They don't have to wait till come to this meeting once a month. Right. And tell them. Right. right. But our staff is set up to be able to handle problems, and they'll take care of things like that. But if, uh, uh, yeah, I yeah, don't I, know. I, anyway, that was on College Street. Uh, I, I don't know anything more about her. What she was saying. Well, thank you. Um, now your comments. Now, now mine. Yes. So water is near and dear to my heart, as I think you all probably know. Um, and unfortunately, um, I have to continue to say it's not pleasant at my house. Um, and um, in regard to that, um, I understand we need, you mentioned rate increases, or will we be seeing a rate increase? Of course we will. Um, there, it wasn't designed properly. They, they didn't budget properly. They totally, they were stupid. They were just ignorant, and none of you were there, I understand. But it was totally mishandled. Well, I guess you were. Yeah. But you, you, you tried to get them. You said no. So what we're left with is we're going to have continual rate increases. And nobody's going to like that. But we're going to do it because you have to have water, right? Um, but what I, what's really hard um, and I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but I'm afraid I'm going to sound disrespectful, especially to Village Manager McCarthy and Mayor Kimsey, by saying that, you know, you keep excusing South Sangam and Water Commission and putting off, they're doing the best they can, we don't really, we're not their bosses, but we are their number one customer. And we pay good money for the water they send us. And we are tied, our property taxes, your rep, your, the constituents you represent, sir, pay, our property taxes are tied to their debt. So you better believe, as a citizen, I expect that you're going to hold them accountable. And in that respect, you appoint a representative who I believe Lee Bloom is chairman of the South Sangamon Water Commission. Our representative, is he not the chairman? He is. So you just excuse him? What is his point? He, he doesn't report to you. He doesn't explain anything. And so a question I have is, um, Bill, so we're paying Crawford Murphy Telly, uh, Bill. Brown. Bill Brown. Bill Brown. Yes, thank uh -huh. you, Brown. Um, to same color by water. Anyway, um, to go to those meetings and keep up on top of the water issues and the conduct of South Sangamon Water Commission and what they're doing, is that, I mean, do we pay him, pay Crawford Murphy Tilly for those services mm -hmm. every time he goes? Okay. But, and I understand Lee Bloom doesn't get paid, it's a volunteer position. I, I'm going to hurt. Really heartfelt. I'm just going to say to you, my husband would be happy to do that job, and he would do a much better job in representing the interests of the Chatham community on the South Sangamon Water Commission. Um, so I have a question because I was at the uh, Utility Oversight Committee meeting last night, and in the minutes, <laughs> several things, but one thing I did not get to clarify was it said that the picking stations were operational as of February 25, but then just now I thought you said that they're working on getting them put in. Yeah, that so, must have been incorrect, yeah, because they're, they're February, that was about the time they approved it to move forward on so their So they commission. just approved yeah, yeah. paying for it and made that it. That would have been about that contract. time, but I don't know. But no, they are not operational. No, no. Okay, so, I mean, I don't know. That kind of maybe needs to be corrected in those minutes, too. Um, because that makes a difference in the way the water goes to the plant and the load that's put on 
the membranes. Um, right. So I have, and so, and on the membranes, you mentioned changing poly to tori. The, and I, so my question for each of you is: Do any of you know what the heck the difference is between poly membranes and tori membranes are? No, I don't think you can find anybody up there. But that's I think we why we have an engineer that is involved in the right. project. Right? Has he explained it to you? Have you, Have any of you asked him? He's he's explained it to you. So what is the difference? It's been a while. So okay. I'm not going to try and tell it right now. Right. So, and I guess what I'm saying is this, and I, I mean no re disrespect, I really don't, but it's frustrating as a victim of this water situation. It's frustrating that you are making the same, in that regard, you are making the same mistakes by not informing yourself, not educating yourself. You're making the same mistakes, and you too, I include you in this, um, even though you're not elected, but, and you're paid a whole lot more than they are. But anywho, um, I digress. That you're doing yourself and your constituents a huge disservice by not educating yourselves about how that plant operates, about how it was intended to operate, about the source water. And you know what? I had to do all that. I had to do all that. I'm serious. So the least you can do, if you're going to be making decisions about our water and you're going to be holding our, so, our engineer and our commissioner responsible, then the least you can do is know what you're talking about. So we can't, we can't make decisions with regards to our water because like Pat said, it's their plan. Um, we do have the chair. We're in control of that. Um, That's, it's a misnomer, too. We correct. appointed the guy that is now the chair. Correct. And but he's still one of that is, that is a, he doesn't work There for is us. a misnomer that we control any of his actions. You appoint him, so if you don't like right. what he's doing, you get him out of there. On, under a very specific set of circumstances prescribed by law. So, so there's a mis can't... there is a misnomer that anybody on this board is going to turn around and say you have to do A, B, or C, or we're going to be removing you. Because once they're the three commissioners that are appointed from the various avenues that appoint them, their responsibility comes to operate the plan. And it didn't. It yes, is which subtle, they're failing to do. Which is. I understand that's your opinion. I do understand that. I appreciate but you're, it's not your opinion. I guess I, I'm asking you that. You think Lee Bloom's doing a bang-up job. I'm not here to evaluate you what think he's all doing. The, but you, you appointed him, sir. So. And the rest of, I don't know who all was here, but you appoint him. He serves at your pleasure. Does he not? Not entirely. And I think that's where some so of the confusion is. Once you appoint him, you can't change that appointment. Only under limited circumstances, I think there has to be cause for the removal. In the, as separate Other than, than if they resign. So, because we went through like four or five. Right? Yeah, they can mm -hmm. resign. They can resign. So they can We're resign. not imprisoned. But once you appoint, you can't say, I'm not happy with your service. So do you think that if you went to Lee Bloom and you said to him, sir, I'm not happy with your service, that he would refuse to resign? I, I'm not prepared to go do that. Right. So, okay, so I'm asking you, sir, politely, are you happy with the job Lee Bloom Look, is there's, doing? There is nobody on this right. board or any at any point in time has come up and said, look, we're satisfied that this is taking longer than we want that you know, we like this expense associated with this. We put a tremendous amount of pressure on each of the commissioners, on the engineering staff, and on the staff that's operating that plant. We've gone to an extent where we engage our engineer, who does have expertise in this water, in this field, far superior to any of the expertise in water production that anybody on this board or anybody within the village has, and we've applied those resources to that plant. Those are the things that we can do as a village that are effective in moving the process forward and moving them in the direction that we want them to go. I could put Ryan, Brett, Terry, Dewey, anybody else 
on that committee, and they would not have that expertise to do that. We're taking the resources that we have and applying them in the best way that we can. If we have additional resources that we can apply, that's also what we're doing. But there's a direction that we're trying to push that Water Commission as our supplier. And there are things that we can do as a board and as a village. Those are the things that we're doing. Those resources that we can add to their equation that improve their process, that improve their production, that control their costs, that increase you know, their customer base. Those are the things that we try to do because they're within our capabilities. The things that aren't in ours, we do have to rely on trustees appointed or commissioners appointed by New Berlin, one appointed by ourselves, one appointed by the county. They have a set of state laws mm -hmm. that dictate the terms under which they are appointed and the terms under which they are removed. So when it comes time to renew a term, there will be a discussion that gets had here with the board. And if they're happy with the guy that's in there, if they're happy with somebody else who has volunteered to do it, that's the point where that discussion goes on. But at this point in time, we have a engineer who volunteers a significant amount of time on behalf of the village of Chatham to move this process forward. And I don't think he gets near enough the credit for the amount of time and effort he is putting in on his own accord to do these things. It's not perfect. Nobody is trying to dissuade you that it is perfect, nor do I ever dissuade you that I think it's going to ever be entirely perfect. But there are efforts that are going on, and they are going on consistently, and they will continue to take time. The things we're upset with, we push them repeatedly. Okay. Um, we'll have to agree to disagree, and I think you're falling far short in, in that uh, situation. Um, as far as the, um, you mentioned a couple of positions on the public property committee. Ms. Osborne, you get five minutes. Good so night. if, um, if you, no, you, you have our email, uh, if you have people that you want on, if you, I would email I'm Mr. Sorry, McCarthy. I understand. I, 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 accept that. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just have a statement. I can't believe in the year 2019 anyone is allowed to burn anything and cut down all the trees that have been that are being cut down around here. Have you not heard of climate change? Have you tried? Would, I don't know how to respond to that the green with water, but no, I, I would not be for cutting down trees and burning them. But that's on my property. Um, thank you. Um, schedule of meetings, committee of the whole. Yes, less. on the leaves, I'm not worried about the, the tree branches. Will we still be able to take them down to going through the proper procedures of getting the permit and then take them down to the village thing to, to dump? We didn't discuss that tonight, so. Uh, I mean, that'll be another the preference, thing. Of, the preference of the. That instead of having the village come and pick up my branches and things and, and the pla my place of employment. <clears throat> Right now, with the way the weather is and things, I'm always picking up branches and things. So, you know, if we could still take them down there and the village burn them down there at the dump and things, I mean, that would eliminate a lot of that problem. I don't know if a lot of people are aware that that's available or is it still going to be available or is the it going to be stopped? The staff's recommendation is to not allow the public to use that that we will use that as a yard for to store all of our equipment and stuff back there. And right now, if people go back there and just dump stuff everywhere, we have no control over what gets dumped, leaf bags or anything else gets thrown back there, and then it's our responsibility to try to get rid of it. We found couches back there before and everything else, so we would just as soon lock the gate 
and use it for our own employees and our own equipment that's back there going forward. That would be our recommendation. Okay. Okay. But as of right now, we can still do that? Or we can right now till if they vote uh, to do it June 1st, then it will cease. that on the agenda for the of the essence. Thank you. Um, schedule the meetings, Committee of the Whole, 615 Municipal Hall, May 14th. Uh, we have a reason for closed session. There is. Oh. Do I have a motion? Personnel to see. Personnel to see. Personnel to see. Employees. Personnel to see one. I, I move for a closed session box. under personnel mm -hmm. under 2C1 for performance. Of specific employees, yes. Of a specific employee. And I'll second. So the motion was made by Trustee Scherchel, seconded by Trustee Fountain. All those in our roll. Roll yeah. Motion to adjourn. Or, no, no, no. Roll, roll on the session. closed session. Oh. And we won't have any business after. Except adjournment, correct. Except adjournment. Motion to go to closed session. Under personnel, under 2C. Okay. 2C1. And it's Trustee Scherchel, seconded by Trustee Fountain. I got that. Okay. You have to take the roll. And take roll. 2C1, okay. Um, Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Fountain. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. Oh, Trustee Dittmers. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. And Trustee Scherchel. Yes. I'm going to stop the broadcast. I received a text message stating that they